everyone. My name is Greta and this is my YouTube channel. I've always been too nervous to make a video, but I think now is the time. I'm not really sure what this channel will be like, but one of my greatest passions in life is baking. So I figured that why not teach you guys to make something, to bake something if you're interested. Today, we are going to bake chewy chocolate cornflake marshmallow cookies. Chewy cornflake marshmallow chocolate cookies. Whatever order you wanna put the ingredients in, those are the ingredients and that's the cookie we're making. If you've ever been to Milk Bar, then you will be very familiar with these cookies. I'm not making the exact Milk Bar recipe because I wasn't able to find it online, but I was able to find a bunch of alternatives. So we're just gonna create something delicious. The first thing we're gonna make is our cornflake component, which is called cornflake crunch. To make that, we're gonna need some cornflakes. Oh, some cornflakes. This is not sponsored by Kellogg's, so feel free to use an off-brand. I'm sure it will also be delicious. We're gonna need some granulated sugar, some just regular white sugar, some melted butter, which I've already melted and have cooled. I don't know if it needs to be cool for the recipe, but that's what we're doing. We're also gonna need a little bit of salt. I'm using sea salt. You also need milk powder for this part of the recipe, which I don't have, so we're not gonna use it. Okay, so we're gonna take a big bowl and we're gonna take five cups of cornflakes. I have my cups here. We're gonna use a one cup. Baking is typically super precise, but for a lot of the things that go into this cookie, like the cornflake crunch, the marshmallows, the chocolate, it's more or less how much you want to include. So I'll tell you the measurements, but this is not the part of the recipe where you need to be like super specific. If this goes horribly wrong, then we can cut back to this part and we'll know why. Anyway, okay, five cups. a lot, but I think it is five. Yeah, five cups, okay. Just get these good bits that fell on the table here. Every little bit, that's good. Okay, now you're gonna crush these. So I'm just using my hands, they're clean. I'm just gonna get them down to like a smaller plate. So now that we're crushing them down, they're like the volume. Is that the right word? They just looks like they're, they're, they're more compact, so they're, it's not as scary as when we first poured the five cups in. That looks good. We brought our cornflakes crushed. I'm going to put in the butter. Let's get a spatula action. Pour that in. This should just help the cornflakes like stick together and make little clusters, which is what we want. So I should say while I'm mixing this up, I have made this recipe once before. And the first time I made it, I didn't make the cornflake crunch. I just used cornflakes. This is a little bit of a different foray. This, like I said, is just gonna add like a nice like cluster texture versus just cornflakes in your cookie. That's what it looks like. They look nice and glistening and beautiful. Okay, now we're gonna add in our sugar. We're doing three tablespoons of white sugar. This is almost like like a cornflake granola. I feel like that's the vibe. I just keep looking over because I have my surface here. Hashtag my top surface. Uh, with the recipe, so if I keep looking over. One teaspoon of kosher salt, which is more than we usually add, or I usually add to, to recipes, but that's what it says. I'm adding a little bit less than one uh, teaspoon, mostly just because I'm scared to add more so. You do always add salt in baking, even if you're making a sweet dessert, because salt is a flavor enhancer. So yeah, it's it's an everything. That is our cornflake crunch. Now I'm gonna magically clear this surface so I can get my parchment out and show you the next step. <laughs> and we're back. Oh, the salt's still here. You're gonna get your baking sheet, and I've already lined it with parchment paper. Once you've mixed all of that good stuff up, minus your milk powder, which I'm gonna really, just gonna dump this out on the parchment. We're gonna spread this out. 
And I've preheated my oven to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're gonna pop that in for about 20 minutes or until your crunch is golden brown. It's in. Scene two. Okay, while our, oh, let me turn this side off. I'm just gonna do a quick rundown of the ingredients that we're gonna need for our actual cookie. We're gonna need, obviously, some regular flour, some white sugar, brown sugar, which is gonna make your cookie nice and chewy. I like milk chocolate chips, but you can use dark chocolate or semi-sweet, whatever you prefer. Mini marshmallows, one egg, and some unsalted butter, both at room temperature, so your butter's nice and squishy. Baking soda, some ground cinnamon, vanilla, Maya's imitation. If you're fancy, you can use, you can use the bean. I'm just using the cheap stuff today. That's all you'll need. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cream our butter and sugar in a large bowl. We need half a cup of the regular white sugar and half a cup of the brown sugar. So we're gonna get our half cup here. Put these guys white sugar. Now the brown sugar might be a little bit trickier because I keep marshmallows in my brown sugar. And the reason I do that is brown sugar tends to um, harden once you've opened it. So I read uh, like a hack essentially that says if you put marshmallows in, it'll help keep it really soft and malleable. So it has worked. So I highly recommend. It's just you gotta like make sure they don't get in your recipe. Although in this recipe, we have many marshmallows, so it not, wouldn't be the end of We're gonna do half a cup of the brown sugar. Oh, let's see, we got a marshmallow in there. Ooh. Oh, that's for our crunch. So we're gonna dump this in, we're gonna turn off the alarm, and we're gonna check on this guy. I think he likes them. Ooh, it smells really good. So that's how we're looking right now. What I'm gonna do is actually just give it a bit of a toss and I'm gonna stick it back in the oven for maybe five more minutes just to get it a little bit more brown. Okay, we're back. We have our sugars here and I'm gonna dump our half a cup of unsalted butter in as well. So this has to be room temperature. I've left it out for probably an hour, so it's definitely room temperature. It'll be really, really easy to cream with my sugar. I'm gonna dump that in, get all of those bits that you don't wanna waste. So I am gonna use a hand mixer for this. You can use an electric stand-up mixer if that's what you have. Before I actually use the hand mixer, I like to give it a little, just like mix myself. Yum. So I got my mixer and I'm just using these attachments. I don't know what they're called. They're, they're not the egg beater ones, they're the other ones. But like paddle, paddle type ones. This might be a little loud. Plug your ears. Okay, so we're pretty much going to beat this until it's light and creamy. So you want it to be, well, anyway, I'll show you, but for about two to three minutes. Every once in a while, I like to pause and just scrape down the sides so everything gets like really evenly mixed together. That looks perfect. So it's like a light brown color. I'm gonna give it another, another like mix and scrape down to make sure there are no like chunks of sugar lumped together. You can see it's almost got like a moussey texture. I'm just wait more. Beautiful. Like if you properly leave your butter out to room temperature, it'll make your life way easier because obviously if you're using really cold butter, it's gonna be really, really hard to mix. And then if you pop your butter in the microwave and melted it completely, then you're not gonna get this really good like solid texture. It's gonna be almost liquidy, which is not what we want for this recipe. So that is the texture you're looking for. So next we're gonna add our vanilla and our egg. The egg I've also left at room temperature. I'm gonna crack this egg. Ooh, okay. There's our extra five minutes on the cornflake crunch. I think that's good. So this is what it looks like. Yeah, I think that's good. Turn off our oven. I'm actually gonna give it another stir to hopefully create a few more clumps before it totally cools down. 
We're gonna let that cool. You wanna let your cornflake crunch cool completely before you add it to the cookie. So we're gonna leave that to cool and continue on with our batter. Cookie, cookie dough. So we're gonna add our room temperature egg. I'm gonna give it a good crack. This is for all you ASMR people. Mm. Egg is in. Egg is in. One teaspoon of vanilla. Into our dough. And now we're gonna give all of this a whisk until it's just combined. Perfect. So that's our wet ingredients done. Set this guy aside. Oh, tastes good. Set this aside and mix together all of our dry ingredients before we add them into here. Flour, soda, cinnamon. Okay, flour, soda, and cinnamon. So I'm gonna start by sifting my flour, and we are gonna be using one and one fourth of a cup of flour. Normally, you're not supposed to reach right into the, to the bag and like get your flour out that way, but because I'm actually using the one fourth cup, I feel like it's kind of like a spoon, so it shouldn't be packing my flour too much, hopefully. Like I said, the final results will, will let us know what we did wrong. And then we're just going to sift that. We're going to go in with our baking soda that I keep in an old gelato container. I always double check right before I put it in just because you don't want to add more soda than you need. And half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I'm actually gonna do a little bit less than half a teaspoon because when I made these cookies the first time, I found they were like a little bit more cinnamony than I personally like, so I'm just gonna do a little bit less than that. You get my little whisk, and we're gonna whisk that all together. Make sure everything is evenly distributed for our flour. So then we wanna bring back our wet ingredients here and then combine our dry into our wet. So I usually like to do this in two batches. I'm gonna add about half of my dry ingredients in. And you definitely want to do a little bit of hand combining before you use the mixer, otherwise a bit of a, a bit of a mess. Combining them like that. And then you're gonna give it a mix and again just until it all comes together because you don't want to overcombine it and then you'll get a really tough protein. That was literally like five seconds. And add in the rest of our flour. Again, give it a quick hand mix. And then in with our mixer. Perfect. Again, at the end, just mix in the rest of that flour that I kind of have on the edges. And this is the kind of texture that you're working with. So it's malleable, but you know, you don't want like a liquid cookie dough, obviously, because it's going to be really, really hard to form an actual ball, which is what you want when you're making. This is the most fun part because this is when you put stuff into your cookie. As I mentioned earlier, there are measurements for this part of the recipe. But honestly, if you want to put in three bags of cookies, I mean, if you want to put in three bags of chocolate chips, live your best life, okay? The recipe calls for half a cup of chocolate chips, so that's what we're gonna start with. And then we're just gonna see if that's enough for us. I'm using milk chocolate chips. Put those in. I can already tell it's not enough. I'm gonna do about half a cup more. Half a cup of half a cup more. One fourth a cup more. That's what we call fast math. And then one cup of the mini marshmallows. And I like to do it over the bowl. So then whatever falls over is just like, I guess it's in the cookie now. Can't have too many marshmallows, that's what I say. Okay, this looks like a lot, but I think it's gonna be great. Okay, let me just... <laughs> Update, um, I accidentally made double the corn crunch necessary for this recipe. So, too bad when I was like, this looks like too much for the cookies we're making. If this goes horribly wrong, then we can cut back to this part and we'll know why. That seems like a lot. That seems like a lot. But I think it is five. Yep, five cups, okay. That's fine. I'm just gonna use this to top my fruit in the morning, so problem solved. So we're gonna put about half of this into here. Here we go. 
uh, or just go scoop it. So you might be thinking, how on earth did you double this recipe? The cookie recipe I use and the cornflake crunch recipe that I use are from different recipes. So I didn't realize that then I was cooking that the one recipe I was making it for was pretty much double the amount of cookie I was making. So I put everything in and I'm just mixing it all in to my dough until we've got even distribution of all of that delicious stuff. So this is what we're working with. Delicious. Okay, so I'm gonna make this into a sort of spherical ball shape. And then we're gonna cover this with plastic wrap and we're gonna stick it into the fridge for at least an hour. I wanna say like 99% of cookie recipes, you should be chilling your cookies before you bake them. It'll help them hold their shape. It'll give the ingredients the best time to come together. Beautiful. Cut our plastic wrap. I have so much crunch left over. I've eaten cornflakes for days. Pop that in the fridge and we'll see you in an hour. This is how much cornflake crunch we've got left. So um, if you're making these cookies, and you're too lazy to make your own cornflake crunch, DM me on Instagram and I'll send you some of this because I feel like I'm gonna have it for a long time. We're back! It's 7.41, a lot of things have changed, including the lighting in this video. But you know what hasn't changed? Our passion for these cookies. It's going great, I'm really excited. This is the most fun step because now we get to mold them and very soon we get to eat them. That's actually my favorite part. Ready for the big reveal. They've been they've been chilling and now they're cool. Your cookie dough should look exactly the same way it did as when you put it into the fridge. If it doesn't, then make sure you follow all the steps in this video because I have a feeling you did that should look the same. So we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna line our baking tray with some parchment paper so our cookies don't stick to anything. Get a close up on this. That's nice. Very satisfactory. Okay. Ooh, ooh, oh. Okay, so there is our parchment paper lined. Now we're gonna open our cookies. I'm actually gonna take my rings off because I don't want them to be. That's not part of the recipe. And my cookies are gonna be just over a tablespoon, so I'm essentially gonna like, you'll see how much I take, but it's gonna be like a, a rounded tablespoon. So I'm literally just gonna go in here and I'm taking about that much. Take it into your hands, clean hands, obviously. And we're just going to roll it into a ball, like so. And if you find that the ball you made doesn't have enough of something, just go in there and like pick it up and make sure you're getting all of those flavors in every cookie. I'm just going to repeat that until you fill this baking sheet. I'm going to give them about two inches in between each other to give a little room for them to spread. They're not going to spread a ton. You still want to give them some space. It's always better to leave too much room than not enough, and then instead of getting 15 separate cookies, you just get like a cookie cake, which is delicious, but just not what we want today. This is like really nice and cathartic. It's just so nice knowing you're gonna get to eat this so, You know? You know when you're baking and you're like, I need cheese, so I get to eat them. Does anyone relate? Leave a comment below if you know what I'm talking about. We're gonna do nine cookies per sheet. A lot of marshmallows in this dough, which I'm not mad about. There we go. Look at that. You've got nine cookies, and I think that's all I'm gonna do per batch. Because, like I said, I want to give them a little bit of room to spread, to spread their wings. You know, you have a really, really good ratio here of cornflake crunch and chocolate and marshmallow. So these guys are going into oven. I've already preheated my oven to 350 degrees and these guys are going to go in for about 16 minutes. Okay, so once my cookies, my first batch is in the oven, oh, I have to set a timer. 
Siri, set a timer for 15 minutes. Okay, 15 minutes and counting. Siri is my search I know I said 16 minutes, but since I've, since I've like found my phone and got it, it's probably been a minute. What I like to do is when my first batch of cookies is in the oven, I actually like to finish making the rest of these cookie balls and just place them on a plate, cover that plate in cling wrap, and then put that in the fridge. I just feel like it's a time saver, so when I'm ready to make my next batch of cookies, they're all good and ready to go. I just pull them out of the fridge and stick them in the oven. Rolling some cookies. I hope these turn out well. I think I mentioned this at the beginning of the video. I've actually made this recipe once before because my boyfriend and I actually really, really love these cookies from Milk Bar. And the last time we were there, um, I thought I could probably make these. That's what I went ahead and did because if you can bake it, you should make it. Should put that on t-shirts. Should I copyright that slogan? If you can bake it, you should make it. I think I'm onto something. This is our last ball here. Let's see how many cookies we got. Two. Okay, that's that's great. I'm very happy with that number. Ooh, I get to open a new thing at Clean Grab. Nope, no. Wow, I'm terrible at this. Okay, 500 years later. There we go. Clean Grab over our cookies. Put these back into the fridge to chill so they can be cool like their counterparts. Bing! Back in the fridge. I mean, now we just get to wait for our cookies to be done. Let me check on how they're doing. Ooh, come look. This is our progress. Keep going. You're doing so good. Keep baking. You look, you look beautiful out there. Okay, party people, our timer just went off. Our cookies are done. Let's get them from the oven. Yes, beautiful. Wow. This is what your cookies should look like when you pull them out. They've expanded. You've got some really nice crackling on the top. Yeah, they look great. They're browned around the edges. And once they've cooled, and I pick them up and I show you the bottoms later, you'll see that the bottoms will be really nice and brown as well. So a trick that I like to do for like aesthetic purposes is, this is just something that I like to do that I think I read on a blog once. I never understood how cookies had perfectly placed chocolate chips on the top after they baked. And then I realized it's just because when you pull them out of the oven while they're still hot, you literally just put chocolate chips on top. So that's what I like to do. So while your cookies are still cooling, just take a few chips, place them on. It just makes, it just finishes off your cookie really beautifully. And you obviously want to do this while your cookie is still warm. So the chocolate chips like adhere to the actual cookie. I'm just using the same chocolate chips that I put into the cookie, but this would be a good time to experiment if you wanted to use white chocolate chips instead or semi-sweet or whatever. This one definitely needs it. It's pretty naked. Aren't they beautiful? I don't recommend you get this close because, because this, this is really hot. But if you're a risk taker like me, you can do it. So we're gonna let these cool on our baking sheet for about five minutes, and then we're gonna transfer them onto a cooling rack. So we brought nine beautiful cookies here. Now that my baking sheet is pretty cool, I'm gonna transfer them onto this. If you're like me and your cooling rack hasn't come in from Amazon yet, just take the bottom rack from your oven and improvise, which is what we're doing here today. <laughs> you know, you just gotta make do with what you've got and you don't always have a cooling rack around, so Obviously, make sure to get this out before you preset your oven to 375 degrees. Otherwise, I don't want to be responsible for any third degree burns. Okay, people, that's pretty much it. This is the finished product. I'm going to eat them very, very soon. Actually, I probably should eat it on camera, shouldn't I? I should probably have a mukbang moment. I'm going to try this one. Here we 
don't look very excited. Excellent chocolate chip to marshmallow to cornflake crunch ratio. The true test. Yes, this is, this is what I, this is what I want. Oh, chip down, it's fine. It's like a, it's like a sauce. Okay, here we go. Mm. That's really good. Wow, that's like the perfect, wow, I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm back. We've got like beautiful crunch on the bottom. The inside of the cookie is super soft and chewy. The crunch, we didn't need the milk powder. This is great. The milk chocolate is great. Everything about this cookie is great. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think the milk bar's got some serious competition. It's amazing. This is dangerous. I have 22 of these. Okay. Wow, that cookie nearly took me out. Okay guys, so that is it. That is the finished product. I'm gonna go now and eat all of my cookies all to myself. I'm just joking. I will be sharing this with some of my beautiful castmates and friends. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you make these cookies. And like I said, if there's something that uh, you do a little bit differently that you feel like really elevated the recipe, let me know. Let me know if there's another thing you'd like to see me bake or do. This was super fun. And now I have 22 cookies as a reward. <laughs> So I'm literally gonna treat myself and hopefully not put myself into a sugary food coma. Okay, that's it. I don't know how to end this video. Hope you enjoy these cookies. Hope you make them. Greta out. See you on the next one.